Air at 30 Celsius and a pressure of one atmosphere is flowing over a flat plate at a velocity of two meters per second. If the plate is one meter wide and is at a temperature of 90 Celsius, estimate the critical length, the local and average heat transfer coefficient, so H. Let's go ahead and put it here. H and average H. Uh, and the rate of heat transfer by convection from the plate to the air for the length of the plate equals X critical. So let's first draw what we're talking about here. I'm going to draw my plate. You'll see that the drawings are going to be the same for every question on plates because I'm not very good drawer. Okay, so that is my plate. I don't know the length of it. I just know X is on this direction here, but I know it's one meter wide. And then over here, I have my T infinity which is 30 Celsius, I have air. And this air is coming in at 30 Celsius and at two meters per second. And you know, my plate is at 90 Celsius. Okay, so the first thing we're asked is, actually, let me just do one more thing before we go into the first thing we're asked. We know that Q is gonna leave the plate and go to the air, right? We know that. <clears throat> so the first thing is to find the critical length. This, Anybody remember what the critical length is or have any um, guesses? The length of the plate. Uh, nope. Any other guesses? It's so one, one thing changes. That's what we call critical length. Something changes at this point. Would it be when the boundary layer is fully separated? Um, in a way, yes, but not not directly. No. Critical length, you guys probably learned this before, is where our uh, regime goes from lamellar to turbulent. Right. So it's the point in which our flow is not lam considered lamellar anymore; it becomes turbulent. Okay. So. If you guys recall Reynolds, start with that. Reynolds, right? Reynolds is density, velocity, and then characteristic length. For the case of the plate, it's the length of the plate, right? So L divided by viscosity. Remember, it's the things that are trying to push molecules forward and the things that are trying to keep it from going forward. So if we want to find Reynolds at any given point on this plate, we can put X instead of L there. So we can find what's the Reynolds here, Reynolds here, Reynolds here, Reynolds here, and so forth. Yeah, Because Reynolds increases as X increases, there will be a point in which our flow should become turbulent. Okay. So the further we are from the edge of the plate, the edge being over here, the more chances we are of having a turbulent regime. Now, the critical length, no, sorry, the critical Reynolds, critical Reynolds, for a flat plate, okay, that's very important, it's only valid for a flat plate, that we'll be using is five times 10 to the fifth. Any Reynolds but greater than that will be a turbulent flow, any Reynolds smaller than that will be a laminar flow. Okay, so if I flip the equation, so if I, if I consider these two things and I flip and I solve for X instead of solving for um, Reynolds, what I'll have is my X critical equals my Reynolds critical times my density divided by my, sorry, uh, viscosity divided by my density times velocity. Okay, so in other words, I can find what is at what point this will become a turbulent flow under the conditions that I have. Now let's just do a little assumption game here. If, for instance, I find out that my critical length is right here on the middle, and remember, I don't know the length of this, but I find that it's right in the, middle, in the middle. That would mean that about half of my system is under laminar flow, and the other half is under turbulent flow. If I find that it is uh, here, for instance, the critical, then it means that most of my system is under turbulent flow, right? Only the very beginning was under laminar flow. Likewise, if I find over here, then most is under laminar flow. If I find over here, for instance, right? So after my play has finished, then I know that the entirety of my plate is under laminar flow. Okay, so there's 
interpretation involved in all of these questions. And the reason why this is important is because the equations change according to whether it's laminar or turbulent. So if I want to calculate my critical length, I need to find, I need to plug in my critical Reynolds, which I have already, right? That's five times 10 to the fifth. And I also need to plug my velocity, which I have already, two, but I don't have density or the viscosity. So let's go ahead into table A5, the same one I've been using because this is air, and let's grab some properties. I'm grabbing properties and I'm grabbing properties at my film temperature, film temperature being 90 plus 30 over two which is 60 degrees Celsius, but you'll see that the table is in Kelvin, so that's how we do it first. So we need 333 Kelvin. Okay, so I'll give you guys one minute to grab some properties off the table just to make sure you know how to do it, and then we'll move on from there. So one quick minute for you guys. You don't have to grab all of them, just to make sure you know how to do it. Okay, so I've placed the properties here for us. And you notice that I already grabbed the conductivity and the Prandtl number, and you'll see why in a second. But it's just good practice to always do that. Reynolds critical, five tenths to the fifth, two times the minus five, so you can see those fives go away, the tenths to the fifths go away, divided by um, 1.059 and Velocity is two, right? Two, two meters per second. This turns out to be about 4.72. We can quickly run through our units to make sure we're doing the right thing. So let's just do that quickly here. Reynolds has no units, then kilograms per meters per seconds. Density, kilograms per meters cubed. And my Velocity, meters per second. Kilograms, meters, meters, meters cube, second, second, so we're left with meters, yes. Okay, so 4.72 meters. So that means that at, under these, these circumstances that we have for our plat plate situation, up to 4.7 meters, we're gonna have lamellar flow. From 4.7 onwards, we're gonna have turbulent flow. Obviously there's a mixed region there. It's not black and white, it's not this or that, but this, this gives, an, gives us an idea, right? Cool, so now we have the critical length. That would be part one. Part two asks us, what is the local and average heat transfer coefficient, or that H, at X equals X critical? So know that we still don't know how long this plate is, right? So we're just being asked, what is the local heat transfer coefficient at x equals x critical. And to do that, what I'll ask you to do is have a look at the equations, okay? And have a look at the second slide on the first page that says that so long as my Prano is not one, which is our case, right? Our Prano is 0 0.7 something, then the local nozzle will be 0 0.332 times Reynolds to the half times Prano to the one third. That we are a nozzle number. For, for me to be able to apply this equation, I need to have a flat plate. My parameter has to be between 0.6 and 50, and my Reynolds has to be smaller than five times 10 to the fifth, that is lamellar, okay, which is our case. Because if we're looking for x equals x critical, then we know that this thing is lamellar until that point there, and it's going to become critical from that point onwards. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that equation there. So, no, so x and my x in this case is where x is critical is 0 0.332 Reynolds x where x is critical to the half times Reynolds to the one third. Okay, so that's the equation I'll be applying. And then like we talked about in the past, if I can find my nozzle, I can find my Reynolds. Sorry, if I can find my nozzle, I can find my um, convective coefficient, right? Because remember that nozzle, and this is always valid, is always valid, is directly related to a convective coefficient, right? So if I can find nozzle, I can find H, and that's the whole point on this 
all this dance that we do back and forth. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in these numbers. Three, three, two is a constant. That's not going to change regardless. Then we have our critical Reynolds. And our Prandtl is 0.701. Okay, so that will give us our nuss. So I got this to be, back me up, see if you get the same thing, please. And then that would mean that our H, where X is our critical length, would just be uh, the 208.7. Times my x critical, which is 4.72 meters, divided by what is the connectivity? Oops, oh, that's right. Zero point zero twenty eight seven twenty eight seven. There you go. This is 1.269 watts per meter square Kelvin or Celsius. Okay, so that is the convective coefficient for that specific place, right? So if we're, again, let's go back to our drawing. I don't know the length of this plate, okay? But let's say, for the sake of argument, this plate is five meters long. Okay, so I've just calculated what is the convective coefficient of this point here precisely, the 4.7. So note that I can define how heat is being exchanged exactly at this point here. Also know how this is changing depending on where I am on the plate, right? So if I were to switch up and then ask you what is the H here, then this would be a different H. Okay, so this is not five, this is just for the sake of argument. Okay, so we know the local at x equals x critical. And the other thing is what is the average, right? So it's asking us what is the average. So again, go back to, this, to the equations and have a look at the second slide. On the second slide, what we're doing is we're integrating, we're integrating all these H's from zero to L, L being the length of the plate, and then we're dividing over L, okay? The division being the idea of average, right? So what we're doing is we're taking all these H's, we're integrating from zero to L, and then we're dividing over L, okay? And we're doing that for every single dx, dx being every single bit of the plate. Okay, if, if we integrate that, we can sub in, instead of having H, we can have um, this equation here for Nusso and Reynolds. And then what ends up happening because of the, the one half there of the Reynolds and all that ends up being that this is just two times the equation that we had before. Okay, so in other words, it's just twice the local one at X critical. Okay, that's why you have down there thus, uh, average Nussel is just two times the Nussel number, and average Q is just two times the Q that we would have over the entire L. Okay, so you're welcome to integrate this and do it for yourselves. We don't have time for that here. It's not a hard integration, it's easy. Just sub in the values and you'll be able to integrate it. But for the sake of what we're doing here, what we find out is that the average H equals two times the one that we just found. So that'll be two times what we just found. And the question is asking us, what is the, let me read the question again, part three. Oh, it's actually, it's actually asking us what is the, uh, the average one. So we just need to multiply this by two. 2.5 two three. Eight. 
Okay, so this would be part one of the answer, and this would be part two of the answer. These are both. They're both asked for on part two. And then the last part asks us, what is the rate of heat through the length of the plate if the length of the plate equals X critical? So now it's assuming the following. Let me go back to our drawing. Let's say, okay, let's assume that this length here equals X critical. In other words, let's assume the length of this plate is 4.72 meters. So in that case, what will be the Q? What will be this Q here for this situation? Okay, so now if we have the average H, and we do because we just found it. Yeah, if we have the average H, we do. That is very trivial because we know Newton's law of cooling tells us that convection is just this, right? And the whole, the whole point is trying to find this. This is the hard point of it. This is the, the hardest thing we need to do. Okay, but now that we already have an average one, well, that makes our life easier because the average Q that this plate is going to be releasing to air will be just the average H times the area times the delta T. And we have all this information, right? That will be 2.538 times the area. What's the area? Well, it's one meter wide and it's two, uh, 4.72 meters long. We're assuming that at least. And our plate is at 90, whilst the air is at 30. So the average Q coming out of this, of this um, plate and going into air is about 718, uh, 719 watts. Uh, questions? 